Greetings, welcome back to Pink Oddbird. Today I'm here to share how I made some mixed media tags uh, about a month ago and I'm going to be doing this by memory so <laughs> I have to bear with me. Um, it's going to be pretty much what I kind of think that I did and I'm going to share my process of that with you all. I got a lot of comments on YouTube and Instagram asking for a tutorial on how I made these so... It's so easy, and once you see how they're made, you're going to be like, oh, <laughs> I can do that. So they have like a really complex look, but they're really much easier than they, than they appear to be. So that's what we're going to be working on today, and the lighting is a little bit different. I'm doing this um, kind of later in the evening, so I hope that you all can see pretty good from what I can see. I think you can, so let's go ahead and get started. So I don't want to take a bunch of time here at the beginning telling you all of the different supplies that I've taken out. I'm just going to explain what I'm using as we go and then different things that you can use in place of what I'm using. And then also I'll try and um, in the comments, in the description box down below, I'll try and list out as many of the supplies that I have here as I can. That way if you want to do this along with me, you can grab out your supplies and then go along with me in this video or you can watch this video and you know, take notes on what you want to use and then go like that. So, first things first, I'm gonna be doing these tags on watercolor paper. Um, I guess any watercolor paper probably would work well. I did use watercolor specifically. Um, you could probably also use your mixed media paper that comes like this also. It's gonna be just as thick and durable. And this is the Canson watercolor paper, cold press, and it is 140 pounds. So I'm just gonna grab this. And I don't know if we're gonna use all this. I, I probably will make two or three tags um, with you all. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I guess the size of these tags depends on what you're going to use it for. I don't really have dimensions to give you. It depends on maybe where these tags are going to be used, if they're going to be in a book, or if you're going to give them away as gifts, or I don't know what, but just, you know, use your own best judgment. But I'm just going to start by tearing, and the theme of these tags originally was kind of like a doomsday sort of feel, like Mad Max, um, something along those lines. So I'm just going to really roughly tear all of my edges here all right so this is kind of what we have so that looks like it'll be a neat a neat little size tag and then let's see maybe we can just do yeah we'll just do three just like that so I'm gonna save this piece for later so the first thing that I want to do just to make sure that we're working on a, a level playing field with everything is I'm just gonna gesso the base of all of these with my plain white gesso, and this is my Finnebear gesso, heavy gesso in white. If you don't have gesso, you can also use white paint, white acrylic paint, that should work fine. I just wanna have everything, you know, nice and uniform, even though this is all going to be covered up and it is just the background. Um, it's just a good starting point for when you're doing projects like this. So there's one. And if you don't want your tags to be as grungy as mine are, you don't have to tear them the way that I did. You can cut them um, so that they're a little bit more uniform, but to me that's what kind of adds to this look. So I'm just going to give it a second to, to let that dry. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do after the gesso has dried down a bit, I'm just going to take some book pages, or a book page, I guess, and this is nothing new. We're just going to be adding a little bit of background to this. It doesn't have to be book page. It can be music paper, sewing pattern paper, um, napkins that you have saved that have dye and ink on them from previous projects, anything that's going to give background to this. And it doesn't really matter because, like I said, everything is going to get covered with, again with a layer of gesso, but this still is an element that needs to be done because it adds texture and dimension to the piece. So. I 
I just mostly do this kind of stuff by feel and just by what I think. I am not like a mixed media guru. Um, I do have, you know, like my friend Priscilla who's released the craft and she's really good at mixed media. And I also like a long time ago, I haven't, I haven't watched her in a while, but I used to watch Mar Me Art. Um, she's really informative and she teaches you how to do so many different things. So there's lots of people out there who are really good at this kind of stuff, but you know, this is just me doing my little <laughs> organic kind of, uh, do what I feel. So, like I said, there's no real, um, method to any of this. But, you know, just give yourself a little something to work with here. And there's no right or wrong amount. One of the things that I feel like people get caught up on a lot is, um, you know, where do I put something or how do I know if I'm doing this right or, you know, whatever. Um, I just say don't really think about it too much. I mean, obviously use a little bit of your artistic discretion to say, oh, you know, this looks a little cluttered or this might not work here. And even if you do do something and it doesn't, you know, work out the way you think it's supposed to be, that's okay because you can always fix it by <laughs> doing something else over it. So just little things like that to keep in mind. All right, so that is what we have so far. And I'm not terribly concerned if these pieces didn't get completely glued down all perfectly to the edges. Like, that's going to be part of what adds the grunginess to these tags, in my opinion. Um, I might move in a little closer so you guys can see better. Okay, now that we have that laid down, I'm just going to take... Oh, I have a little... Just a little tub of random scrap bits here. Nothing special, nothing specific. The point of this is kind of just to use what you have on hand and, you know, just get some of the stuff used up. It, things that you think may think might not, you know, you might not use for anything else. Like, you might not think that you might use this little scrap of lace for something, but, you know, here we are. <laughs> so just get down some of your scraps. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start doing that a little. And it can be any kind of lace or... Just really anything to give yourself some kind of background texture. I would suggest adding some kind of textile here to your tags or your tag bases, I should say. And I'm just going to use Fabri-Tac to glue these down. It dries really fast and we're, <laughs> we're putting textiles down so it makes sense. So I'm just going to kind of get these laid out until I feel like there is enough. Okay. <clears throat> and again, you don't have to make sure that the edges are completely glued down. If they fray up a little bit, that's fine. Those are the kinds of things that kind of start letting your tags develop texture on their own. And you don't want to over clutter it with these textiles because we're going to be adding uh, more texture into the background so just get yourself you know a good little a good little um smattering of fabric here and there it's a good way to use your fabric scraps too okay okay and i'm trying to go a little bit fast because one we're doing three of these and also um i just don't i want this to be not too edited down so that you can kind of get the full process as much as possible. Um, but you know, not taking uh, an hour, hopefully to do these. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to let that fabric tack dry down a little bit and then we will come back with, uh, the next step. I kind of think that I want to add maybe just a little bit more. <laughs> You know, sometimes it takes you stepping back for, you know, just for a second to take a look at what you have and then kind of make your next moves from there. None of this has to match, really, because like I said, it's all going to be re -gessoed. So don't worry about it being 
uh, matchy matchy or not. And because we are going to multitask, I'm gonna just set those to the side. And for the metal pieces, I don't wanna choose anything too specific because I want, I'm gonna move this up so you can see. All right, so I pulled out my trinket box and I wanted to pull this out so that you, you know, you don't feel like you have to use something that's too specific, something that you might not have on hand. I feel like we all probably have trinket boxes. So dig into your trinket boxes and see what you can pull out. I was, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. <laughs> so out of this trinket box, I pulled out three little random pieces here and I'm just going to set those down. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to pick pieces that are not too, uh, like here's one, I can use that. And uh, let's see, here's another. I will use this one also. None of these pieces mean anything. And, uh, ooh, mm, that one's kind of curved. Here, mm hmm. Might be kind of bulky. And, oh, here. A little square. So we'll take those out for now. And then, uh, what we're going to do is, one second here. Alright, so these are the little pieces that I pulled out. Just some random little bits. It's not all we're going to use right now, but it's what we're going to start out with. So I'm going to just randomly pick one, two, and uh, three. And then I have a little bit of thread here. This is just regular, I don't know, like cotton thread. It's nothing too fancy or expensive. Any kind of like thread that you have like this should work. So I'm going to take one of my needles here, uh, probably, and thread this. I won't, I won't make you suffer through that. So one sec. All right. I don't need a whole bunch of this. We're just going to be doing some little random stitching, but I think there's one step I'm supposed to do before we do this. So I'm going to take my little trinkets and set those and my needle off to the side. I'm going to take my, I have crackle, crackle paint and I have texture paste. All right. And then I also am going to grab my stencil. Any stencil will work. Doesn't really matter. The first time I did this, I used my fishnet stencil. So just use whatever you have. It, does, it doesn't matter. I think that's all we need for now. So what I'm going to do is take my palette knife. Here it is. <laughs> and I'm going to start adding a little bit of crackle, crackle paint and texture paste to random spots on these tags. So... And I just kind of want to focus on the outer edges because you'll really kind of be able to see it there. And I'm not going for any kind of perfection here. I really want these to be grungy. So, and it doesn't matter. You can do it over the fabric a little if you want. Hello, texture. Okay. So that's enough of the crackle paint on that one. We'll do a little bit here. Crackle paint, when it dries, it basically starts to crack and gives you like this crazy, cool, like cracked cement sort of texture. So I'm just doing this randomly. And then we'll do this little one here. Do a little bit down here. 
I want to save a little space uh, for the texture paste. <clears throat> All right, so put this away and clean up my palette knife here. So next, I'm going in with my texture paste, the crackle paint. Um, I don't. I bought this at a, a scrapbook store. I'm sure they probably sell it anywhere, but you can probably Google where you can get this if you really want it. If you don't have it, you don't need it. Um, you can use texture paste, and this is just the Ranger texture paste. Um, I believe I got this at Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to take a little bit of texture paste because I want these to dry kind of fast. So I don't want to do this too thick. And I'm kind of holding it up like this so that I don't mess up my... Um, you know, my crackle paint that's in the background there. Okay, so there's some texture paste. And we might do a little bit here on this corner. If you are a mixed media guru, don't don't drag me too much. I'm just this is just something fun. <laughs> like I said, I'm not trying. I'm just showing you the way that I did it. Um, <clears throat> so this is not the the all knowing way. It's just the way that I did it. <laughs> all right. So there's some more texture paste, and then we'll do one more. And as soon as you're done doing this, I would suggest rinsing your stencil off because um, this kind of stuff will, you know, be the death of your stencil if you don't wash it off right away. All right, so I've got those three done. I'm going to wash off my stencil and uh, clean up the space a little bit and I'll be right back. I forgot I had a little bit of this in the mix too. And this is my stone effect paste by Finnebear. And there are some different like gritty pastes in here. I'm just gonna, you know, pop these out and add a little bit of this to some of the tags as well. So this one is uh, limestone. So this one is kind of like a fine, the like fine grit. And you can uh, push this through a stencil, but just for now, I'm just gonna just randomly, cause I have, if you can see here, I have a couple little blank spots and I just want to pop a little bit of texture in on some of those spots. So just going to add a little bit of the limestone and I'm really only adding just like a little, a literal little bit. Okay. And it won't look like much right now, but <laughs> it will later. So that's the limestone. I'll take a little bit of the pumice. So this one is a little bit thicker, thicker grit than the other. And I love these so much. They are perfect for, you can hear how gritty it is. Let me stop talking so you can hear it. It's like rocks, which was perfect because like I said, the theme that I used these for originally was like a Mad Max. Uh, apocalypse kind of thing. All right, and then I'm going to do one little bit of this last one, which is concrete. And this one's like a darker gray. And I don't want to cover up Ooh, that one's even grittier. I don't want to cover up all of the, you know, textures that we have here. I just want to add a little bit to some to enhance it. So there's that one. So that is that. And we're going to let those dry for a little bit. 
All right, while these are drying off a little bit, they're kind of dry to the point where I can kind of touch them in spots and the paste isn't gonna really come off anymore. So what I'm gonna do is take my needle and thread that we had uh, bring out just a few minutes ago and take some of my little metal pit pieces. And all I'm gonna do is pick a little random spot and then just kind of very rustically, haphazardly, just so, um, sew this on. So I'm just gonna do that. And this is very, like supposed to look very crude. Again, this is going to be for a grunge theme. So nothing to be too, you know, precious about as Priscilla says. <laughs> so we're gonna just go with the flow. All right, so here we go. These are dry enough to the touch, you know, nothing is sticking anymore. The texture paste, uh, to me, takes longer than anything to dry. <laughs> so um, it's, it's dry now, none of this stuff is gonna move when I do the next step, which is back to the gesso. So all we're gonna do is coat these tags completely in gesso, again. Now these tags are fully prepared with all of their texture. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this on camera, but in person I can kind of see all of the wonderful like textures really well. And um, these are fully prepped and ready to go. So now I'm gonna start coloring them and I definitely don't remember <laughs> the way that I did this originally, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do what I think I did. Since these are going to be grunge, I do want to stick to, you don't want to make, mix up too many colors. I'm going to be sticking to like browns, coppers, blacks, and green. Um, I guess the coppers kind of bundle in with the brown. But I have those. I have a little bit of green alcohol ink here. I also brought out my magicals, which I don't know if I'll use those or not. And then I pulled out, again, some acrylic paints in the same tones, a bronze, a brown, and a yellow, just to give a little bit of lightness because sometimes you need that, and then black. I'm using the black gesso. Um, and then, of course, I have a little bit of water here on standby because I'm not sure, you know, how, how I want this to be, really. So using the colors and then going back and forth with the colors and the water is what kind of helps you give these tags the the treatment that you want to give them so let's let's see I'm gonna just open up this yellow that has on clearance the other day at uh, Joann's a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna mix that with a teensy bit of brown and I'm just gonna take my brush with a little bit of water on it not 
too much. A little bit more than that though. <laughs> and mix these and whatever color this turns out to be. I do want it to be a little bit watery just so that I can kind of let this start to like drip onto the tags. So let me stand up here so I can see what I'm doing. All right, I do want it to be a little darker than that. So, oop, it's kind of a lot. That's okay. No, not too bad. And I'm just gonna start pressing this in in different places. And I'm starting out with these lighter colors but we're gonna jump into some colors that are a little bit darker here. So we've got that down. I'm gonna take this green spray. I don't even know, I don't, yeah, it doesn't spray. I'm just gonna pour this on and spritz it with a little bit of water to help it start running down. Same here. And you can kind of guide this. Oh, you probably can't see. You can kind of guide this and, um, you know, it'll stop and sort of saturate in where you stop moving it. So, but here. And then it puddles up in some of these really nice places um, where we have added different textural elements. Okay, so we've got some green in there. I think I'm going to go with a little bit of this. Oh no, you know what? Not that. Sorry, not that yet. I'm going to go back in with some darker paints again, taking the brown and maybe let's mix it with a little bit of <laughs> alcohol ink. I know this is, I don't know if this is so cringe or not, but this is literally the way that I do things. I just try stuff, um, you know, and see what I get. Oh, that's not bad. So again, this is just all building up layers. It might not seem like you're doing much, but you are. <laughs> Everything that you add from here is just going to be a layer that we start to to build upon. So I want to take some of that alcohol ink by itself and I'm going to just spotty dotty that and I want to act fast because the alcohol ink kind of dries quickly. So I wet that a little bit. Look at that. And let's just do some here. add a little bit more let it drip onto the next tag okay I'm gonna dry this a little bit um, so that we can set some of this in place I want to go in a bit with my this color glimmer mist here this one is called tiger lily so this one's gonna fall into like our orange category and some of these I like to spray if it sprays which it looks like this one probably doesn't nope <laughs> cool I picked a bunch of um, sprays that don't spray oh <laughs> Ne'er wonder. All right, that's okay. We'll um just do some pouring. Easy does it. Okay, that 
looks pretty cool. And you see here, I'm not even going to do more than that on that one. And I'm just going to do a little bit on this one. It's good enough to me. And give it a spritzy. Cool. All right, so that's what we have so far. Now I do want to start darkening this up a little bit more. So I think we'll start bringing in some of the black and I'm just gonna grab my brush. And I'm watering it down a little just so that it's got more, um, you know, movement to it. Yeah, like that. I don't really know how to explain the consistency, but it's really movable. Okay, so this is, you have to start being a little bit careful. And I want to focus this dark, darker color on the edges. And as soon as I get this kind of down, I want to hurry up and spritz it because I don't want it to stay in one place. See? And if it does get to be too much, like, this is all you have to do. Dab it up, and you'll pull some of that color back up. All right. So I'm going to let that one sit for a second, and we'll work on this one here. This one already kind of looks cool how it is, but... We're not done. <clears throat> Again, I'm just going to dab up in some of these areas because I do want some of those other colors to show through. All right. And so here, I really like this turquoise here, so I don't want to cover that up a whole great deal, but, you know, we got to get a little bit in there. So. All right, I'm going to dry this up a little bit, make a little bit more of my mixture, and uh, we'll keep going. So I'm going to dry these down a little. Alright, I don't imagine that we're going to need much more black than that, so I'm going to set that aside and then we're going to go ahead and get a second coating of black here in some different areas. So here, and let's give it a little here. And I'm only just slightly dabbing here because um, I don't, you know, you don't want to take up all of it or you don't want to take up the layers that we have underneath. And also, uh, you can see all of the different treatments that we're doing to these tags. So that's why it's important that you use a paper that is going to be able to withstand um, everything that we're doing here. Because um, if you try and do this on like cardstock or something, it's not really going to work. So some areas, I don't mind if it's super dark, kind of like that, you know, just depends on the look of grunge that, that you like and that you, that you want, that you're going for. And you can tilt this different ways. Your stuff is just going to start going, you know, different ways and give you some cool patterns and stuff. And we're not, we're not stopping here. So, um. You know, we do need to pay attention to um, making sure that we keep it dry after we do sets like this. I need a new napkin because um, it's going to turn into mud if you don't. And I hope that doesn't cue some of you guys to be like, well, April, it already looks like mud. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. 
Okay. Um, yeah. All right. I'm going to clean up my station and I'll be right back. All right. I didn't want to clean up my whole, my whole bit of black that I had there because I might, I'm not sure. I might still use that a little bit, but we've got a lot of our like heavy colors in the darkness. So I do want to go in with a little bit of like the bronze to give it a little bit of a, um, sheeny, sheeny, shiny, rusty look. So again, I'm going to, oop. Just drizzle this down a little. Some of that black water is in there, but that's okay. It just helps grunge it up. So I'm just gonna start popping some of this in very unnoticeable until you kind of give it one of these kind of moments because then you can really see the the shimmer of that bronze and if you want it to be uh, more stand out you can do that just add more show you what it looks like still not terribly oh there there it goes <laughs> Um, but yeah, you're adding some neat like layers here. So I'm going to go back into the darker version of it. All right. So I do want more black on that. Ooh, that looks cool. Okay. So, uh, next I want to do a little bit with my sprays. And then I think we're done with the color, but I really, really want to get some of my sprays on here for some more of that shimmery kind of element. So let me, let me grab them. All right. So I'm going in with the money bags and I'm just going to randomly spray these here and there. This one is marigold. It's a really nice kind of yellow. It's only going to spray a little bit, which is fine because I don't want this to overpower, but a little bit more than that would be fun. <laughs> Just a little bit more than that. There we go. Got some drops of it. Just to add that shimmer. Shimmer, shimmer, y'all. And a little bit more green. I think I'm going to, oh, this isn't green. Oh, yeah, it is parsley green. It's a dark green. Okay. And um, I think, I think these are at a good spot where we're at. Yeah. So I'm going to dry these down again and we'll be back. These are pretty dried down, so I'm going to let these take a little break and we're going to move these aside and work on the next step. So we are going to get some rusty bits prepared, so I'm going to bring these back out. I did pull this one out too, but I don't think I'm going to use that one. We'll just use these metal ones and I'm going to grab a couple of cogs. And those are gonna, these are gonna end up being our rusty pieces. All right, so I've grabbed some cogs out here. So we're gonna go back in with the white gesso and get these all painted down. Okay, so. The underside probably doesn't matter as much, but 
just to kind of keep it consistent. I'm going to do it anyway. Plus, it'll help um, when we have to stick these down. It'll give it a tooth. And we will move on. So again, we're multitasking. So I'm going to take my black soot distress ink and while we're waiting for these to dry, one of the finishing touches that will happen on these tags is to give it a good distress around the edges. So that's what I'm going to do. It really ties it all in, you know, the finished look helps give it that grunge factor. And these are still a little bit wet, but that's okay because um, once this all dries down, everything is gonna, you know, really set in and, um, you know, they'll be good. So I think I'm going to let these dry overnight, obviously. And then tomorrow I'll probably take some better pictures of these and then show you all what the, the finished, finished, finished project looks like and um, so far from what I can see we are definitely on the right track for what I did in those original tags that I made um, that book was actually a book that we made for my buddy Kim it was a collaboration between me and a bunch of my friends we each made a signature and um, she picked the theme which was gothic fantasy and so I went with like I said the apocalypse apocalypse and um, these were the tags that I made in that signature of my contribution for her book. So, whew, they look so good once you start adding that. I mean, here's the difference. This is without, this is with. Makes a difference. As much as I hate distressing on a project like this, um, it really just, um, you know, seals the deal. <laughs> So if you've tried these tags, if you've followed along with me and my little process, <laughs> definitely uh, leave me a comment down below letting me know where I can see what you've created. And um, I would love to see what you guys come up with if you try this out. So you can uh, comment down below, let me know where to find you. You can tag me on Instagram with pink odd bird. And um, yeah, I would love to see what you guys do. A lot of you were curious on this process. So like I've, like I've shown you, you don't have to be restricted to using one or two or three of the things that I've, I have here. You can play with water and you can play with mixing colors to get different variations of things. Um, and just use what you have. Like don't go buying a bunch of things. Like just use what you have. That's part of what makes this all fun is the challenge of just creating something with what you have at home in a relaxed environment, you know, nothing stressful. Oh, I have to go to the store and buy this or that, you know, and, um, I'm trying not to edit this video as much as I, as possible so that you can have it as real time as possible, but it's getting to be a long video. So I definitely will have to edit it down, but if you guys kind of like this format where it's not completely edited and not fully sped up for the whole video, you know, where I can at least kind of talk to you about what I'm doing and not just have it spliced up or sped up, let me know what you guys prefer. I've, was, I've been thinking about that. And um, so just let me know what you guys uh, prefer when it comes to a tutorial that's like this. I mean, some of them... I don't think it's so it's such a bad idea to speed it up because some things can be kind of self-explanatory or left up to your own creative intuition. Um, so, you know, different, different kinds of videos for different kinds of tutorials, I guess. But <laughs> these 
these are going to be basically like the last little finishing touches for what we're doing. Um, it doesn't have, I mean, I'm trying to show you that you can just really use random things. Like if you have little chipboard pieces and you don't know what to do with them or even broken chipboard pieces uh, or wooden pieces, um, any, any trinket, anything that's pretty relatively flat because more, more often than not, th these are going to be something that go inside of a book. Um, just use that. Don't worry too much about it. So I'm going to be using my Finnebear Rust Paste. And this comes in three steps. One of my, one of them is kind of dried out. I think it's, yeah, it's this one. But since this one is dried out, I don't know why I won't throw it away. Um, stuff is expensive too. This one cost me $15 when I first bought it which was a couple a year or two ago something like that but yeah I've even tried adding like water it's I mean yeah this one in particular the darker one dries out fast so in what I've been doing in in place of that one because you do need all three of these colors it's like a process it's like a step process I guess so I so first you go in with the the lighter color I don't know if these have names on them gold rust so you go in with the gold rust which is kind of like this yellowish gold color and then you go in with the red rust which is more like a red brick kind of color and then it's supposed to it's supposed to be this one last which is brown rust so I usually will just mix a little bit of black or brown or mix the two paint and that will give me what I'm looking for. So today I've already put my brown away. I'm trying to keep my space neat as we go um, so I can have as little cleanup when we're done here. So I'm just gonna use my black gesso and it'll, it'll be fine. So I'm gonna pop that kind of open so it's ready. And all right, so you can use your finger, you can use a brush. Um, I think I'm just gonna start out with my finger. So. I've tried to zoom the camera in as much as I, I can, but let's see if I can kind of come closer and show you what I'm doing. So I'm just dabbing some of this yellow rust, I guess is what it was called, here and there. And I'm not trying to do this to be um, perfect or precise or any of that. I want it to be random because you want this to really look like rust in the end and it it freakishly really does <laughs> so um I hope it's focused I've, I've been having issues a little bit with the focusing I feel like I have to really pay attention or else it doesn't really focus like my last well one of my last videos I don't know when I'm gonna post this but it's kind of a bummer but I'm trying to save my money to get a new camera because I really would like to have like a nice, nice quality camera so that you guys can see probably better than what you can right now. All right, so very fun and very rustic. All right, so close that one up. So now I'm going to gear in with the red, is it red? Yeah, red rust. And this one is a little bit thicker. Uh, I think I'm going to end up having to buy this all over again because I love these, but geez, if you don't use it like terribly fast, uh, you'll find yourself with, you know, three pots of dried out paste. All right, so this one, like I said, is like more brick-like. So I'm going to start dabbing this in places over and around the yellow that we've already added on. I hope you can see that it is starting to take on a rust-like appearance.
So now that I've got the red added on here, I'm going to, oh, actually, what I do is I take a little bit of this red, which I probably had enough on my finger, but geez, I need to use this stuff. <laughs> and I'm gonna put that down and take a little bit of me black off to the side here. <laughs> it's probably seeming like this is a really big task for these kinds of tags, but you know what? I mean, it's kind of worth it in the end. So I'm just gonna mix this with the black until I get a color that's pretty dark enough to where I kind of, you know, feel like it's gonna be equivalent to that dried out freaking brown rust. Such a shame, especially when it's so expensive. You know, it's always sad when your products kind of just die like that. So I'm going to start adding this over the yellow and the red that we've already added on. And covering up any white spaces, especially if your piece is dimensional. Oh, that looks so cool. Hold on. If you can see, and once this dries down a little, you can go back and keep building up on the layers of this, not too much because then it's just gonna be a chunky mess, which is probably literally my life, but. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> just, you know, use your best discretion. Oh my gosh, it looks so real. Okay, we're done. Whew. Okay, almost done. So I'm gonna clean this space up a little bit and we'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna see if I can try and put these on the napkin so it's like a white background that you can see what I have done. But tell me these don't look friggin' real. So that's what they look like. All right, so to glue these down, I'm gonna use some soft, soft gloss gel. And Priscilla gave me this, so let me focus. And uh, I'm gonna sit down so I can be closer to ah, the tags. So you can see, I'm gonna sit down so I can be a little bit closer to the tags and see where I'm placing this stuff, but I'm just gonna use my good old fashioned finger to get these glued down. And then they're gonna glue, or they're gonna set overnight and uh, they won't be going anywhere. All right, let, let me grab the paper and then we'll do the sentiment and then we're done. So I'm just taking a little bit of cardstock and I'm just gonna randomly tear it. I don't really know what sentiment we're gonna do yet, but that's okay. Let's start with this. Uh, let me try thinking about what I can write. All right, I am going to just... <clears throat> okay, I have a few words that I've written out here, and then of course I want to 
go back in with the black soot and kind of grunge it up a little bit more. And I need my glue. I'm just going to use my Fabri-Tac because there are textiles and stuff underneath or that we'll be gluing above or onto. So I'm going to put the word ashes here on this one. I like the way it looks with that piece of fabric backing it there. And then this one. And then one final thing that I want to do is take Miss, Miss Janine, who has Lipstick, Le Lipstick Legion Craft, sent me some Prima waxes, and I really want to try it on uh, try it on these. Thank you so much for these, Janine. Oh, I'm, I can't wait. She's like, you're, oh, whoa. Oh, gosh, and it smells good. Hello. Wow, this is uh, really nice. Okay, I'm, I've never used this, so I just, oh, okay, I'm just going to add like little bits. Oh my gosh. It looks so friggin' cool on the rust. I cannot. Oh my gosh. Wow. This is, thank you so much, Janine. <laughs> okay. I just only want to do a little bit because I don't want to make them glamorous, but wow. Oh my gosh, this stuff is like magic. Sorry. Excitement. I'm just shook right now. Oh my gosh, I want to put this on everything. Oh my gosh, this, this stuff is exactly... I, I hate to say it because I use Inca Gold all the time and it's really good and I love the way it looks and I have like three colors of this, but this um, stuff here is something else, I will tell ya. You probably can't even see what I'm doing, but I mean, you, sh you, should, you should be here to share this excitement with me, I think, because it's, woo, whoa, oh my gosh, I would have died if that fell. Let me see if I can show you. It really makes it look more like patina. Wow. Okay. Okay. I'm done. But wow, you guys. All right, we're done. It's been over almost three hours, which <laughs> hopefully I will be able to edit this video down so that you don't have to suffer through three hours of making these. But you know what? The first time I made these tags, again, it took me about three, almost four hours to make. So um, it's really worth it. As you can see, they're beautiful tags and I'm very happy with the way they turned out. They do look like the original ones that I made, except better with that wax that I've used. Um, uh, tomorrow I'll take some better pictures of these so that you guys can get a good look at what exactly we have done. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions or if you have any commentary feedback, just let me know down in the comment section below. And I would love to hear what you guys think. But I mean, you guys, these are so beautiful and I hope you have enjoyed watching this. Again, if you give it a try, let me know. Find me, Pink Odd Bird, here on YouTube and Instagram. And that is going to wrap it up for me for now. Be sure to stay tuned because you never know what direction this odd flock of ours is heading into. And until next time, toodaloo.